Hello, in this video I'm going to look back at the original controller I built. Recently I've been concentrating on the new controller board, so this video is to show some love to the people who are sticking with the old board. The board I have is one of the originals from 2019. I cannot believe how long I've been doing this project for. Anyway, if you have an older controller board like I do here, there is a really small change you can make which can dramatically improve the communications to the cell monitoring modules. If you're frequently seeing drop packets or CRC errors in the web interface, then this small change could fix most of those for you. If you remove the ESP8266 from the controller board, underneath you will find a few resistors. The one at the top marked R2 is the one we want to change. First of all, see if you can read the markings on the resistor. I'm using a microscope here. If the resistor is marked 4701, then this small change is for you. If it says 2201, then you are likely to have a newer board, so you don't need to make this fix. So the first thing we need to do is remove the R2 resistor. Normally at this point, I'd warm up the soldering iron. However, it just so happens that I've been contacted by the people over at Banggood, and they've sent me this. It's a soldering iron tweezer set, which looks like the perfect tool to remove this surface mount resistor. For the regular viewers, don't worry, this channel isn't going to turn into an unboxing channel. This is the first and only time I've been sent a product for free. So let's get this thing out of the box and give it a go. And although, although I uh, received this for free, I'm under no obligation to give it a positive review. So let's take a look. It's a smaller box than I expected, but if we open it, the first thing we see is an instruction manual. In English, if you believe that, and also a operations manual. Now I spy a Chinese death adapter, which is strange because this unit has a normal UK mains plug fitted. This is going straight into the bin. Don't ever use these things. Delving deeper into the box, we have the mains lead, the iron itself, what looks like a control box of some sort, and a metal stand. So I'll uh, just go and read the instructions. Six and a half hours later. Okay, so here's the lowdown on this device. It feels quite well made. The stand is a little bit flimsy and the sponge is non-existent, but it will expand with water and it'll probably do the job. The cable to the iron is silicon and flexible. There's a little screw on the side of the tweezers to adjust how wide the jaws open. It seems a bit of trial and error to get the two jaws to align, and I had hoped there were some sort of spade bits rather than these prongs. I've warmed up the soldering tweezers for the first time and tinned the tips using some solder. It recommends doing this at 250 degrees Celsius. You simply turn the dial to change the temperature. So let's try and remove this resistor. The lowest temperature setting is 200 degrees Celsius. Let's turn that up a little to say 230. You often need a bit more uh, heat to unsolder something. Oh, this thing heats up really quickly. It looks like I originally hand soldered this part on, so there's lots of solder around it already. Let's try and get this resistor off. Okay, so the first problem, the jaws are not quite narrow enough to get in between the socket headers. This probably wasn't the best job to practice on. Okay, so this is difficult getting the tweezer tips into this small space. I'll uh, increase the temperature a little bit as well. I expected the resistor to simply fall off at this temperature. Perhaps I'm not doing it right. It's also possible the temperature is at the uh, heater end rather than at the tip of the iron. Well, that resistor is finally off. Looking at the state of the pads, I may have used lead-free solder when I soldered this board. That needs a higher temperature to melt, and I've often had problems with unsoldering it. It probably wasn't the best component to pick for a first demo. So now I'm replacing the old resistor with a new 2.2 kilo ohm one. It's uh, 0805 in size. I bought these from LCSC, but any electronics retailer will sell them. I'm going to use a standard soldering iron to attach it to the board, uh, just to make it a bit easier for myself. There's uh, enough solder left on the pads without applying anything new. So once the new resistor is in place, you can reassemble the controller board and power it up as usual. Hopefully you will now see fewer communications issues. Okay, so I was eager to try desoldering some other parts. I've seen other people use soldering tweezers without any problem, so I'll go away and practice. A few minutes later. A few Great, so with a little practice, it's quite easy to get the parts off the board. I've increased the temperature of the iron and the parts come off fairly easily now. And it's definitely easier than using a single or uh, even two soldering irons at the same time. I like the design of the soldering tweezers. They fit comfortably in the hand and are easy to use. 
The tips would definitely be better if they were flat to align to the components better, but I think you can buy different tips for this purpose. I'll leave a link to the product in the description um, in case you're interested in uh, buying one. But uh, apart from that, thanks for watching.